Um, not quite sure what Albert's doing. It uh, could be the time warp. Well, I've decided to have a little bit of a lie down. Now for anyone who watches my videos, this means something amazing has been discovered and oh my god. People band around a little bit too often when finds are er epic or amazing or, you know, out of this world. Albert, who's been metal detecting for six months, has just discovered a find which could be of national and international importance. And it could be absolutely worth a fortune. The jammy swine. <laughs> what a find. Wait until you see this. This is the most incredible day's metal detecting. And you know what? I didn't even find it and I have to lie down. It is incredible. Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire. It's like a scene from that movie Twilight. We're expecting this three to take human form at some point, but uh, I needn't have bothered buying a new spade because they're pretty good at digging holes. Huh, it's a cigarette. Anyway, these are Albert's dogs. <laughs> um, what are they again? Mal Malamutes? Malamutes. Malmutes, so they're absolute monsters. The three of us are out today, me, Marty and Albert, and we're back on that site that has produced two Roman or possible early Iron Age Roman brooches or Iron Age brooches. And they're probably about 2,000 years old, give or take. So we're looking forward to getting back out on this field. I've also got my brand new spade, which I just bought. An evolution, or a revolution? No, evolution. I've got the XP Deus 2. I'm going to go with program 3. And Marty is on the XP Goldmax Power V4. And Albert, who hasn't got his metal detector yet, but it'll be a way to get it in a minute. He's going to be on the Garrett AT Pro International. So let's go and see what we can find. And I have got my first signal. Now, interestingly, Marty's just off to my left. He's digging a signal as well. Uh, I've got a... It's a mid-tone. It's coming in... Coming in about 60. But... It's either a big bit of iron, because it's also an iron tone there as well, uh, or it just is a big bit of iron with nothing else. But let's see what Marty's got in his first hole. Oh, now that is something. There you go. Well done, Marty. I think that could be Iron Age. Mm. I think it could be part of a brooch. Uh, I'm sure I've seen a similar sort of design. The only thing that's thrown me is it looks like it's gold gilded. Yeah which normally you'd associate more with Georgian. But that could be Iron Age. That could be very old. Not bad for a first hole. But let us know in the comments, but I think that could be something pretty significant. Well done, it's copper, copper alloy. And if that was a couple of thousand years old, that's a brilliant start. Well done, Marty. Okay, back to me. As I say, this signal's a bit ropey, but given what Marty may have just discovered, well worth a dig. If I can find it. So about there. So, first hole for the, uh, for the new spade. Let's see what happens. Well, certainly cuts through the mud, that's for sure. Moment of truth. Now look at that. Oh, suits my perfect style for flipping the mud. And listen how much better that sounds. There is a bit of iron in there, so that's a good sign as well. Well, I'm on exactly the same alignment as Marty's thing, so who knows? Ah, there's something. There is something. 
Is it an epic ancient find? Or is it just a thingy? And the answer is, I think it's just a thingy. I think it's a little slither of copper. Yeah, there's a bit of banding on there, but I don't think it's going to be ancient. But it's a thing. Right, on to the next. Barely two seconds later, about six feet away, and we've got signal number two. It's a pretty consistent 84, 85, 86. Which is normal numbers you'd accept or expect from a coin. But it doesn't sound like a coin, not unless it's on its edge. So, soon find out. It's either out the hole but just there, or it's still in the hole. Nope, I've dug in the wrong place. Should have went there. Yeah, it's 87 to 90. I think it's going to be maybe a bit of aluminum. Is that it there? No, there. No, oh, there. Well, well, I tell you what, I think it could be a brooch. Oh, oh, oh. I tell you what, I think it's exactly the same as what Marty got. Marty, I think it's the same sort of thing as yours. Right, let's see. Gentle, gentle, it is. It's got gold gilding on it. It is pretty much identical, except mine has got the loop still in it there, look. That is something. That is exactly the same as Martin's. Exactly the same. Look, it's even got that little sort of circle there in the centre. So I think it could be, I think that could be Roman or Iron Age. It could be some kind of fibula or brooch, but it's... It looks familiar. It looks very familiar. Um, it looks really familiar. I'm sure I've seen it in a book or a drawing. Or a diagram. I think the hole goes, it does, goes all the way through. Look. That is practically identical to what Martin found. So is that some sort of ancient Iron Age or Roman brooch or something else? other, Some other kind of decoration? But my God, if it is, what a start. Yeah, so... Marty's kind of looks more like now it's drying out, like it could have a bit of decoration to it or such like. But look, you can see the hole in the centre, identical. You can see where his little loop would have been. Or maybe it was that one. Um, but look at it, right down to the gold gilding, it is identical. So that could be a really important sign. What a field! What a sight. Well done, Albert, for getting us on this. Just spreading out from the uh, the find. That's where I got mine. Martin got his just over there. And here I've got a sort of upper mid-tone. 75, 76. So, look at that speed. Oh my God, this is night and day compared with the, uh, the Black Adder. Okay, oak. Okay. he's got something. The top of a what? Symbol, I think. I thought it was a button, but it's hollow on the inside. Oh, nearly dropped it. Yeah, it looks like it. Maybe the top of a thimble. It does look like yeah, it is the top of a thimble. You can see part of the side bit just there. It looks a bit older, though. The squares are quite big. So, yeah. Well, it's going to be probably at least Victorian, but it could be much older than that. Not a bad wee find. Right, let's have a wee look at this one here.
Is that it? That is it. My God, it's tiny. That is absolutely tiny. And it looks like it could be silvery or gold colour. Really not sure what that is. It could be that there's been a loop on the back of that. It's been a little button. But I'm not sure. I think we'll leave it in its current state. I won't rub it too much more. Um, when we report the the items that may or may not be brooches, then uh, we'll see if they think it's something or nothing. This one was a mid-tone. Um, came through 45.50. Again, a signal that, well, I suppose could be a hammered coin, but it was a pretty poor signal. Um, but now it's out. Sounding a lot more lively and came from a pretty reasonable depth. Three spade fools, probably about 10 inches down. So, given what we're getting off these fields, well worth a, a wee shot. There's something there which is round and it's a button. Well, you don't know unless you try. But still, it's got a bit of age to it. Let's give it a wee rub-a-dub. It's a four-holer. Probably would have had a maker's mark around the outside edge, but it's gone. It's rusted away, or corroded away. Copper, copper alloy. Date-wise, probably going to be something like 1800 to 1900, give or take. But it's a find. Marty with the first coin of the day. And it is... 19... 45, the end of World War II, and it's a farthing. So you'll see a little bird in the centre, which is a wren, one of the smallest birds of the United Kingdom, and it's going to be George VI. You can see him looking to the left-hand side. A farthing was a quarter of a penny. Not only did we have half pennies, but we had quarter pennies as well. And George VI, he was famous the King's Speech, stuttering King George, and he was the father of Elizabeth II. Brilliant, first coin. I got one off this uh, field last time we were here as well, so hopefully more to come. It was an ear-blowing signal, practically on the top, just an inch or so down. It's a little, um, it's almost like a wedge. It's made of iron. Um, I suspect it's not massively old, but then I don't know, because this isn't my usual field, I don't know at what rate iron disintegrates here. But yeah, it looks almost like it gets blows on that side. But then again, maybe it's a raker off of agricultural, like a sort of tilling machine or something like that. So again, let me know in the comments below. This seems to be the, uh, the field for strange tones. This one... It's coming through like 60, 55, 60. It was a really rough signal. Uh, it took a couple of spade fuels out. You can hear that. There's an iron signal registered on 42, 37. And that's a 57 over there. So this is the better target. And good news, Mr. Albert's back without the dogs. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be the dreaded tinfoil. It is. Mr. Kipling strikes again. But he does make exceedingly good cakes. Right, let me show Albert what we've got so far. Albert's here, he's just checking this hole for me. He's getting a, a reasonable signal one direction and poor the other. What do you reckon on the AT Pro? High 80s. On the AT Pro, my spade's fallen over. Right, where was it? About there. For me, it's a bit chirpy. It's a 93, 95, 97, but that last bit of what I think might be a brooch came through like that once it was out the ground. Still in there.
Yeah. Another hole. Right, if we don't have it this time, we'll get the pinpointer. No. Still seems to be in the hole. But it doesn't sound so good now. Right, get the pinpointer, see if we can figure out if I'm in the wrong place. No, slap bang in the middle of the hole. It's just deeper. Right, I'm going to turn you off for a second so I can get down on my knees and uh, make this hole a little bigger. Well, I wasn't going to say at the start it sounded like silver, because it didn't sound like silver, but look at that. I just took out one hole there, and look at that right there. That could be a silver coin. It is a silver coin. Victoria, I think. Victoria, it doesn't even feel particularly heavy. Crack her open. I don't know. Oh, nearly dropped it. Moment of truth, if it's Victoria, she'll be here. There she is. It is. <laughs> Albert witnessed it. It was a weird signal though, eh? That was such a weird signal. And again, at real, real depth as well. That is brilliant. It's a shilling. I can just make out the word shilling there. It's quite worn. Um, so a shilling in the old days was 12 pence. Let's give it a wee rub-a-dub. You can see there the shield on the back. You've got the three lions of England. You've got the single lion, the rampant lion of Scotland. You've got the symbol of Ireland there at the bottom with a harp. Wales, unfortunately, doesn't get a mention. I don't see a leak anywhere. And the date is just there. It could be a 9 and a 5, which would be 1895. So look at that. That is pure silver, solid silver, because this was 1920, I think it was. They they moved from, well, 9.925 silver um, to, they moved to 50% silver in 1918. So this is 0 0.925 silver. Queen Victoria ruled from 1836 to 1901. Fan dabby Well, that took a lot of effort. I was about 10 inches, 11 inches down, pretty stony ground. And unfortunately, it's a great big iron nail. Um, maybe it's Iron Age. <laughs> well, I don't think it's that old, but hey-ho. Another wee single, uh, single, signal for uh, Alberto produces this little thing. And in first, first show, I thought, oof, to tell you what, it could be another bit of a brooch, but I don't think it is. I think it's possibly part of a buckle. God, that light's really bad. There we go, that's a bit better. Uh, yeah, I think it's maybe a bit of a buckle. So, probably off a horse, I'm guessing. But if you think otherwise, then, as ever, let me know in the comments below. Oh, and date-wise, if it is a buckle, I think it's probably 18, 1900s. Again, another bizarre signal, um, but masked by iron. There is iron. Great big ferris, reading 02, but... A very high-pitched 8283. Is that actually right there? I think it is. I think it could be a screw. Or something. Uh, maybe not. What is that? That looks a bit interesting, doesn't it? It's like a, a bronze or a copper. Could be brass as well, I suppose. Some sort of fitting, maybe. It's a bit of an irony sort of colour in that end. What do you think? I'm inclined to think maybe furniture related. Maybe a pipe tamper. Shoving your tobacco in. Or maybe some ancient Roman or Iron Age artefact. I'm inclined to go with furniture. Something like a drawer handle or some other kind of fitting. But again, let me know in the comments. 
and I'm thinking probably a hundred, a couple of hundred years old possibly. Weird signals continue. It came through 85, 87. Um, it's got again a point on one end, flat on the other, bent like a hook. Marty said that he had one almost identical, but it sounded like a good signal, but it almost looks iron. Um, but still, no idea what it is. What do you make of this? Marty has found this thing here, which I think could be bronze. Now, you can see it's slightly just started to crumble away on the edge there, so I give it just a wee gentle rub with the old toothbrush. And that could well be bronze. So what is it? What is it? It's like something I can't say I've ever really found before. It's got a sort of rounded edge, uh, edge, rounded end at that end, and at that end as well. So it doesn't look like it's broken. It's got a flatter edge on this side. And the other sides feel a little bit more rounded. So a bit bigger than a bit smaller than a pencil. What do you reckon? A stylus? Something? I don't know. It could be old. I mean, that could be, it could be a few thousand years old. But I've got no idea what it is. So again, let us know in the comments below. Keep a hold of that, Marty. Again, it's not brilliant. Eighty-two could be similar to the last one. God, it's quite stony there. Try again. Right. Oh, we're out. Sounds a lot better now. Well, a lot better. Sounds better, not a lot better. So 81, 82. That's not it, is it? No, nope, that's a seed. Is that it there? That's it there. And that is a bit of lead. That is not a bullet. That is a bullet. Is it a bullet? That is a bullet. Look at the bloody size of that. That is a, a three ringer, as we say in the business. <laughs> Turn that off. Get the brush out. Now it's got a little gash out the side of it, but that was not me, so that's been done either when it was fired or uh, by the plough. That is a bullet, my God. Can you imagine getting shot with that? It looks like a hollow point as well. And uh, that's the sort of Inside of it, that is a bullet. My God, it's like a 50 caliber. What were they hunting? Elephants? That is a whopper. So how old's that? Well, I'm sure someone's mentioned before. I can't remember if it was this big, but someone said something like a mini bullet. M-I-N-I-E or something like that. But that's a whopper. That's got to be a 50 caliber. Huge. Date-wise, I'm guessing probably 18 hundreds, give or take. But again, let me know in the comments below. This one was a really ropey 83, but look at this, two spade fills down, it's out the hole. That sounds a lot less ropey. Right about there. Yeah. Am I going blind? Oh no, that's it there. Ah, oh, firepower. It's a musket ball. It is a musket ball. It's a funny shaped musket ball. But it is a musket ball. Well, two bits of firepower uh, in very short succession. Right next to one another. Well, it didn't sound like a musket ball, but it's a funny shape as well. 
it's fairly rounded on that side, but this side's a lot flatter. Maybe it's because it's impacted on something, but I've got a right, right big high banking immediately in front of me, so obviously people from off to my left using the, the bank to take the impact of bullets. Date-wise, probably going to be 17 or 1800s. Another bit of a ropey signal came in 50, 52, bit sketchy, bit rough, bit scratchy. And we've got a buckle, unfortunately broken, but I suppose that's probably why it was lost in the first place. But it's looks like it's got a bit of age to it. It's copper, copper alloy. Would have had a pin across there, I'm guessing. You can see the staining. The pin was probably made of iron. And it's maybe a shoe buckle. It's kind of a little bit like a spectacle buckle. I would say Georgian. So probably George the First to George the Third, which is sort of 1714 to 1820 kind of era, but could be earlier. Could even be Jacobean. So back to James the Sixth of Scotland, James the First of England, which is 1567 through to 1625. So let me know your comments. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. Nice bit of decoration on it. I'm um, not quite sure what Albert's doing. It uh, could be the time warp. What you got? He looks he looks pretty excited with himself anyway. I've actually got a nice signal right here. I'm gonna need to gonna need to leave it. Let's go and see what the man himself claims to have. Whatever it is, he's just dropped it. <laughs> I think. Right, I've actually got the, the phone out the holder. Let me get it back in the holder. You on the wind up? Oh, look at this. <laughs> You're having a laugh. Oh my shot. God. What is that? That's a cracker, isn't it? That is... That is a bull. Or an ox. Or... Something. That's old. Something... Uh, that is a... Uh, it's got most of it in the back for... I think it's a... Uh, I think you might well have found like something. <laughs> you might well have found something pretty amazing, Albert. Right, we're going to give this a wee delicate clean up. In fact, will we do it on camera? I've got the toothbrush. How deep was it? Maybe about eight inches. Was that a good signal? Oh, it was, it was bang in 80, 183, 80, 183, just solid. I actually thought it was going to be silver. That is solid bronze. It's got a little uh, rivet, two rivets through the bottom of it. Albert, this is. You need a wee bit of straw just to poke the mouth out there. Oh, get you on camera. Oh, there's something in there. Hang on, I might be able to. There you go, it's coming out. It's got a rivet. That's what the dots are on the bottom. Like it's two rivets True. that are going through. Albert. For a belt or something? Albert. Oh my god. That's amazing, that, isn't it? Albert, you've got no idea, have you? <laughs> that is. Albert, that's. Oh my god! That's a. Uh... That is... Martin's just about to... Martin's just <laughs> left about 10 minutes ago. He's going to go and see if he can catch him. Uh, he might already have jumped in his car and left. I do not believe it. That is... That is Celtic. That is Iron Age. Or, at the very, very latest, it's Roman. That is... Unbelievable. That weighs a ton. That is heavy, heavy, heavy. That weighs about 3 ounces. Um, and that is solid bronze. Look at the decoration on that. 
That is unbelievable. I'm guessing. It's bronze, isn't it? That's it bronze. Is bronze. That's for suspension. There, maybe a bit of rope. It's actually, if you look at it, it's actually it's quite worn. Boring. So that's maybe for a bit of rope going through there. The rivets, I'm guessing, maybe leather. Or maybe wood, it kind of pinched on to leather or wood. That might be a decoration for a chariot fitting. Mm. Off a bit of leather or off a bit of wood. Albert, this could be one of the greatest metal detecting finds ever made in Scotland. <laughs> ever. Need a fog. Albert's on the cigarettes. Unbelievable. I cannot believe that. The best thing you've ever found? You've only been metal detecting for <laughs> how long? Six months. Six eight months, months, eight months. Well, at least you found it on your field and not mine. That would make it even worse. <laughs> Right, look that the is, look at the detail that's on it. That's actually the rivet there. See that bit going through? Look at the changing green mm -hmm. colour. Albert, that is, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything else to it. I'm just going to leave it. Albert, that is of national importance. He's joking. No, nah, Albert, um, <laughs> that is, that is of, oh my God, Albert. You've got no idea no, how. Seriously. seriously. So we've had two definite brooches off this site, which are are either from the, the Iron Age, from about 50 to 100 BC to about 100 oh, AD. Yeah. I would say that this is the same period. Could even be slightly earlier. But this is going to be Scottish, Iron Age, Celtic. I mean, look at the decoration on it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Now, not only is that going to be... I, I haven't seen anything like this. I've spent a lot of time in the National Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh, which is our main museum, and they don't have anything that looks like this. Not only could it be incredibly rare, but that could be worth an absolute fortune. Seriously. Seriously. That I'm is incredible. He's away to phone his wife. Don't phone your wife, she'll want the money. Oh my god. Staggering. Absolutely staggering. Doing a dance off camera. He's doing a dance off camera, thank god for that. <laughs> right, I'm going to just go and cry for a minute and then I'll get back to you. Here is uh, Albert's fine spot. Coming through at a 75. It's an ear blowing signal, depth wise. Yeah, it's probably only, what, seven inches, eight inches, give or take. Now, <laughs> we're on ploughed field, so this is this is not from a an archaeological context. Um, it's in a plough. It's been This has been rolling about in the plough soil for probably 2,000 years or more until Mr Albert comes along now. Lightning strikes twice for Albert because... Albert, how long ago? Four years? 2017. 2017. Albert hit an incredible find. The biggest gold nugget discovered in Scotland in 400 years, over 400 years? Yeah. In Britain. The biggest gold nugget found in Britain in 400 years. Now in the Hunterian Museum. Now in the Hunterian Museum in Glasgow. And it's what, 80? 80... 85.6 grams. 85.6 grams. And dare I ask, what was the value? It was valued at 50,000 plus. Valued at 50,000 pounds plus. Now, Albert has now just went and discovered something that's not quite as old as the gold. But my God, I think this is going to be a unbelievably significant find. Not only an, a, a significant find, this is not a casual loss. We've got two definite brooches. We've possibly today found another two that are from that same period. We'll find out. No doubt people will leave comments. But if they are, that is indicative that this is a settlement. This is a village or a town or a fort. 
which is completely undiscovered because there's nothing on any archaeological site that suggests anything in this field or even the fields immediately around it. So it looks like Albert has not only discovered something of national, maybe even international importance, but it is it's a completely unknown site and uh, it oh my god I'm absolutely lost for words now we had a, a quick look online on the internet and we found a couple of similar looking things which were which were Celtic pre-Roman and the very 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 beginning of the Roman conquest of England so they were from about 100 BC to about 50 AD the Romans invaded England in 43 AD and they were described as bucket hangers or bucket handles or something. Bucket mounts. Bucket mounts, that was it. Bucket mounts. So basically, from what I could gather... I can see that now. Yeah, you can see it now. That would go into the edge of a wooden bucket and a metal uh, handle would go through there and a great big loop, just like a bucket today... But the most important thing is on the other side be would be another one. Because there would be a pair. You need two to hang a handle. Now we actually saw one online that was pretty basic. Mm -hmm. A lot more basic than this. It's the detail. And it had sold. It had sold for <laughs> £10,000. <laughs> I hadn't told Albert that yet. I didn't want to panic him. Oh. So... There you go. That is just incredible. Right, I'm going to go for a lie down. Albert, take this before I drop it. <laughs> if you know what I'm like. Well, Albert, incredible. The museum, when they see this, are going to go absolutely bonkers. In fact, the internet is going to go bonkers when they see this. That is... Look at the detail. My mind is blown. That is just, that is the most incredible thing I've ever seen touched with a metal detecting find. I mean, that is spectacular. Utterly spectacular. Six months of metal detecting. <laughs> Ridiculous. Well, we should also add, well done to the Garrett AT Pro International. What a find. What a find. Re a... Retire now. <laughs> Give up. Because it's not going to get any better than this. Oh my God. Oh my God. I've actually had to just have a sit down for 10 minutes. I don't think Albert realises potentially the significance of what he's just found. I think that could be one of the greatest metal detecting discoveries in Scotland uh, in in history. Now I know that the the Stirling Torques, which were sold, I think, for about a million pounds, four Iron Age uh, Celtic gold torques, which were discovered near Stirling, about an hour uh, an hour's drive away from where we are. Uh, they were found about ten years ago. Now. I know they sold for a million pounds and they were incredibly rare and all the rest of it, but honestly, I think what he has just found might well be on a par with them in terms of, oh my God, the rarity, the decoration, and more importantly, it looks like Albert has discovered a completely unknown Iron Age site. Now, the two brooches that we did find previously, which are both tinned or silver-plated, that's a sign of high status. This is someone with a lot of money. If the two that we found today turn out to be Iron Age, well, they're potentially gold-plated or uh, gold... What's the word I'm looking for? Totally, my head has exploded. Gold-gilded, gilded. Now, if they are Iron Age, then that is, that is an incredible sign of wealth. Uh, and for him now to find that bucket mount, if it is a bucket mount, it could be off a chariot, it could be something related to a horse and rider or something. Um, that's high status beyond 
unbelievable high status for the Iron Age or the Celtic period. Um, oh, my, oh, my mind is blown, absolutely blown. Um, but in all the excitement, I'm forgetting, I've got a good signal here, just as he started dancing about like an idiot. Um, solid 89.90, I hate to tell you, it actually does sound a maybe, maybe, like it could be silver, maybe a silver bull. Okay, we're out. Well, at least it was easier to find. Now, as soon as I'm finished, I'm heading straight for Albert because, as we say, if that's a, if it is a bucket mount, well, you need two of them. I don't believe it. You need two of them for a bucket. That is a silver coin. Slightly overshadowed by what Albert just found, but that is a silver George V. And it's a shilling. 1929. Silver! <laughs> Coin! <laughs> well, it's, uh, I'll just, I'll run up there now to tell him, because you probably think I've got something ancient, but um, yeah, it's a one shilling, so it's 12 pence, exactly the same as uh, my previous coin, um, back in the day when there were 240 pence to the pound. This is not solid silver, which is strange, because it actually looks in better condition than the Victoria one, but it's a beautiful coin, actually. Lovely tone on it. George V, by the grace of God, King of the Britons, Defender of the Faith. And this is the grandson of Queen Victoria. So you had Queen Victoria to 1901. Then you had uh, gorgeous, uh, sorry, you had uh, Dirty Bertie, um, who ruled until 1910. And this is his son, George V. I'm up on the high ground where Albert got his find. And uh, I've switched over to Deep HC in the hope that maybe, just maybe, I can get a little bit more depth and see if we can winkle out any other great finds. Now, this is a bit of a faint 86, 87, so I'm going to give it a bash and see what happens. I've had to put the old gloves on because it's getting... Cold, cold, cold. It's going to be frosty tonight. It's a pretty clear sky. Now, we've only got probably half an hour of darkness, uh, sorry, half an hour of daylight left. And this was the target. So, about 12 inches down. So, certainly the Deep HC program certainly went deep, but it looks to be iron related. So, I think we'll put it down as agricultural junk. I've dug about 10 holes uh, in quick succession, and uh, they were all iron iron targets but this one here is a stone wall for not being iron a screamer of a 79 that's not out there is it oh it bloody is too is it it is <laughs> look at that <laughs> oh, i thought it was a coin but it's not what the hell is that did you see that it was right on the surface right on the surface what the hell is that? It's got a weird sort of back on it. It's almost like a button, but it's not. Well, that is bizarre. That is bizarre. How the hell? Oh, I don't know. Um, right. Oh, don't tell me I've lost my toothbrush in all the excitement. Oh, oh no, I think I have. <laughs> Hang on. Right, I'll get back to you in a second. Never mind uh, Albert's potential 2,000 odd year old. I just got the find of the day. Look at that. I went away down to where I found that silver coin. And I must have uh, must have fallen out of my pocket when, uh, when uh, I dropped it. But I left Albert with this thing. What do you reckon then? It's a solid 63 with me. Now, we think it's copper. Uh, sorry, bronze. And... Uh, on the back, I thought it was a coin, but look at the back. It's got like a, like a sort of welded fitting, but that looks old. Mm -hmm. That looks really old. Don't know if that could be part of a, part of a brooch, part of a mount. And you know, the color, the patination is exactly the same 
is it Albert's bull or oxen or cow or whatever it is. Right, and that could be interesting, that could be of a similar date, which would be tremendous. I can't believe it was lying right on the surface. Let us know in the comments below. Be interested to hear your thoughts. Delighted to get my toothbrush back. That's twice now I've lost this. It's determined to leave me. Albert's got himself a wee military button, which probably at one point would have been gold gilded. But as you can see, it's got pretty good detail on it. Now it's not one that I can honestly say that I sort of recognise. There's a scroll of letters. GR maybe? But the crown above, on the back, probably going to be a loop somewhere, if it's still there that is. There it is, buried in the mud. And more than likely, if he's able, oh, in fact I think it's missing the back. That would have probably been a maker's mark, it would have said the Strand in London. It tends to be most of them, but it's probably going to be World War I, World War II era. Not quite a 2,000 year old uh, <laughs> bull, but ah, you know what, you can't win them all. Just to catch up as well with a few of his other finds that he's had, because for a while there we were a bit apart. Now, he's got some interesting things. These here, I think this is part of a, a horse buckle or two horse buckles, one or the other, but they are pretty chunky pieces, so given what else we've found, we're not going to say that it's definitely horse buckle, because you never know. Then he's got himself this unusual little sort of pin looking thing. Copper or copper alloy, don't know, could be a bit of fencing, but then again it could be a couple of thousand years old. And then you saw this earlier, which we think is a buckle, but we're not certain. But this is probably the most interesting thing. He's got himself a piece of bronze which has got a lip around the edge and to me, potentially, looking at the shape of that, that could be like a shallow bowl or a shallow dish if you look at the profile. So I don't know, it could have been, it could have been relatively small but then again it could have been a great big wide dish with a handle like what they call a patera, which is almost like a frying pan sort of shape, but that is bronze, so that could be old. So again, let us know in the comments below. Albert is on fire. Right, Albert had a, his bull was 83 in the ground, but 75 when it was out when he ran over it. Now, He's got an ear blowing 83, which I just went over with the Deus 2. It came out at 92, 93, which to me would be silver, a great big Georgian copper, or aluminium. Alternatively, of course, it could be a could be a 2,000 year old Bronze Age bull or something. It's a coin. It looks like a big Georgian copper. Well. That sent the heart racing for a wee minute. Not quite the, the bull we were hoping for, but there you go. There is a man who has a, a great big potato head. And that is George III. You can see him looking to the right hand side on the reverse. You can see Britannia seated, kind of. Um, there she is. So Britannia seated. So I think it's a half penny. It's going to be 1760. To 1820, we're in a rush because we've only got 20 minutes of daylight left, so we don't want to spend too much time waiting on it drying out. But I'm sure it will get better. Couldn't find the bulls. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well done, Albert. Albert got his little um, bull just over there and right here. Honestly, we've been scouring the ground here. I've got myself a 70 something. Seventy-seven. Let's get right in there. See what happens. We're out. We're out. It's jumped to eighty eighty-one. Don't see a bull's head. Ugh. Ugh. 
Well, what is that? That is a bit of... Oh, that's bronze. Giving it as best a, a rub as I can. Is that a hole? Just a little divot. But yeah, that is a piece of bronze, metal working. I don't think it's broken off something. I think that's a bit of waste when someone's been pouring molten bronze. So that is another great sign of hopefully some good stuff to come. Maybe they were making a new handle for their bucket. Just shows you how good the XP Deus is at small targets. That is a tiny little stud button, a little domed button. Probably going to be 100, 200, 300, maybe even 400 years old. Tiny target. Uh, very, very small, barely a centimetre across, might even be slightly less than that, um, but at a depth of six inches, slow and low, and out it pops. I think with the light fading, we've only got about ten minutes of uh, sunlight left. Uh, this may well be my last dig of the day. And to be honest, it could actually just be a great big bit of iron. But, given the field, given the significance, we'll dig it anyway. Well, there could be one target, there could be two. If there's only one, then unfortunately, I think it's junk. Then we'll do a wee summary of all of the, the finds. Oh, that is it. <laughs> Look at that. That is a part of a... Probably an axe, I would think. Maybe. Uh, not getting too excited, because generally if it's made of iron, it's going to be less than 100 or 2 or 3 or 400 years old. Beyond that, generally, you don't think it would survive in the soil, but... Um, yeah, not what I was expecting, but... Still, it's a, uh, it's a find, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It could be a bit of an axe. It could just be something else. But it looks like maybe there's been a, a sort of axe head, and it's come out to maybe about there. But uh, let me know in the comments below. Let's see if I can get anything in the final ten minutes. Well, that is us for today. Now, ordinarily, this would be. A pretty fantastic six hours out. Two silver, one ninety-two and a half percent silver, in Victoria, uh, and the other fifty percent silver, give or take. Um, bit of a fragmented buckle, buttons, a potential two thousand-year-old Roman brooch or part of a Roman brooch, a fibula. But again, let me know in the comments. Practically identical to the one Martin got. Um, Huge musket ball, massive bullet, fragments of bronze. Now, I must have dug 20 or 30 big iron tar targets as well. And this here interests me because this could be, could be similar era to you know what. Because all of this completely overshadowed by, you know, I might as well just chuck all this in the bin. <laughs> Completely overshadowed by this jammy swine. Um, now look at that for a find. That is just... Gets better every time I look at it. Honestly, I could weep. I really could. That is... Stunning, 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 stunning. I think when the archaeologists get a photo of this in a few days' time, I think they're going to have a heart attack because I doubt there has been much better found in Scotland with a metal detector than that. That one day, I think, is going to end up in the National Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh with a little plaque below it that says, found by the same man who found the Douglas Gold Nugget. <laughs> Talk about jammy. So for anyone who doesn't know Albert's main passion... Um, is uh, prospecting for gold, which Scotland has got 
quite a bit of gold reserves dotted around the country. I'm not going to tell you where, but uh, Albert, as I said earlier, found the biggest gold nugget ever discovered in Scotland uh, in over 400 years. In fact, in the United Kingdom in over 400 years. And it now resides in the Hunterian Museum in Glasgow. And it was valued at over £50,000. So that's not bad going. But look at that for a find. Oh my God. This is the most incredible thing I've ever held. I've found two gold hammers. I've found two half sovereigns. And this blows them all out the water. It really does. That is a find of huge staggering historical significance and I think it's going to be somewhere between 1,900 and 2,500 years old. That's my guess. But I'd be interested to hear all your comments and we think it's a bucket mount. Failing that, we think it's off of a chariot or a horse fitting of some description. But either way, it's going to be around 2,000 years old. What a man, Albert. What a find. Well, thank you all for watching. Let's try and get plenty of thumbs up on this video. So please, if you like what you see, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment. And if you don't already, hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a penny. So thank you all for watching. And we will see you on the next dig. Take care.